is the American dream still alive? My name's Grant Cardone, and I took on a challenge to build a million-dollar business in 90 days in a small town in Colorado during COVID. Your COVID test came back positive. Without using my name, without using a credit card, and without using any of my contacts. This is anxiety right here. This is suicide mission. With only $100, an old truck, and a cell phone, I got to build a million-dollar business in a town I've never been to. It's hard when you got money. It's impossible when you don't. Follow along behind the scenes of Undercover Billionaire. What they didn't show you, couldn't show you, wouldn't show you. I'm going to show you right here, right now. The world is going insane. Now, I have this idea that we're going to start a marketing company. And while I'm starting a marketing company with no money and no contacts, that's what I'm using Matt for. Super dude, Matt. Big shout out, Matt Smith and Jenny, okay? While I'm doing that, I'm trying to buy this piece of real estate that I found called Kona Kai. Kona Kai is owned by one person. This property was given to the individual by his dad for a wedding gift. Like they don't tell you any of this shit that I figured out. Why they didn't show you guys this, I don't know. What's wrong with you, Discovery? You should be ashamed of yourself. Calling yourself a TV channel. So what happened was I found this property. It's 154 units, stable in the community. The rents are super low. How did I find out about this? Again, they don't show you. Because I was looking for a place to live, fools. I need a place to live, okay? So what do I do? I start scouring real estate. They don't show you this while I'm sick. While I'm looking for places to live, guess what? I'm making notes of places I can buy. Now this is really, really important, whether you're broke or not, down and out, beat up, got nothing, no name, nobody knows you, nothing. You could still be looking for opportunities. Just because you broke doesn't mean you're broke on ideas. See, as Lewis Curtis, the reason I knew for sure I could do this, you can take my name away, take my hair away, you could take away my social media platform, you can take away my credit cards, my money, my cars, my plane, but you can't take away my ability to see opportunity. What are opportunities, okay? I didn't start a new business while I was in Pueblo. I basically ran into a guy that already owned businesses and then my, my goal was to buy this piece of real estate. It was actually not to start a marketing company. They didn't tell you this and I'm gonna tell you why they didn't tell you this. Cause they didn't, Discovery didn't want me to buy real estate. What's wrong with you people? We fought for days over this, days and days, okay? Literally wasted three days. I wanna buy a piece of real estate, okay? And then they would freaking drag me around and make, make me do other stuff. Hey, we gotta pick up this clip and that clip. I'm like, I wanna go buy a piece of real estate. I looked at like eight different properties. They cut every one of them. I forced them. The way we cut this thing was they were forced to show the Kona Kai deal because I actually got them pregnant with the concept but they believed that the real estate was not a business. What's wrong with you people? Maybe that's why you're having trouble running a damn network. <laughs> I mean, running into the ground. So watch, check it out. I'm like, guys, I'm gonna buy 154 units. It already has $800 a month income. Well, you don't have any money. How are you gonna buy a piece of real estate? My problem, not your problem. You don't know how to do this, I do. My goal was to go get with a community of people, raise the money, get debt on the deal, and do it. If I would have pulled this off, you'll see why it didn't get done in a second. I would have made $6 million on this transaction, actually $6.1 million, $6,160,000 before any fees. And I knew for sure I was gonna pull this off. Okay, I was literally, I'm telling Discovery, I'm gonna whack you guys, okay? I'm telling you guys, I'm gonna make six million on one deal and then I'm out of Pueblo. And that's why they made sure this deal didn't go through. Kona Kai didn't happen. You'll see that happen and why. They don't tell you exactly why it didn't happen, but basically my cover got blown. You should be ashamed of yourself, Discovery, for blowing my cover. Purposely blowing my cover. Because they didn't want me to do this deal, okay? You know why? Because they don't want to show you that actually money, when you have the right strategy, money is easy to make in America. 
You don't need a name, you don't need money, but you do need contacts. Contacts are contracts. Contracts, depending on how big they are, will determine how much money you make. Any of you want uh, how I look at real estate, because it is the single fastest way for you to create assets in your lifetime. There's no faster way to build assets. I'm gonna give you guys a link below to show you a 90 minute training on how I buy real estate, what I'm looking for, how I calculate its value. And all you can do this in your backyard, completely free. Put a link below, Johnny, make sure everybody's got access to it. I'm gonna show you why I knew Kona Kai would make me $6 million. Look, the apartment deal is a score. I've been buying real estate for 35 years. My whole body is vibrating on this deal. If I'm right, there's at least two and a half million dollars of profit to be made here. My difficulty is I'm Lewis Curtis and I don't have any money. My checkbook right here has got maybe five grand. I'm going through my money and I'm losing time. And I'm putting in writing that I'm gonna buy a $10 million building. LOI stands for letter of intent. It expresses intent to buy a property and proposes a purchase price, the terms, and a closing date. I'm gonna write the deal for 8.75 million. Asking price on the apartment building is 10 million. I'll need to submit a deposit of 2% of the agreed upon purchase price. So I'm gonna to need to raise 200,000 from investors to prepare for that. Look, I'm working the real estate angle. I'm working the promotion company. I'm gonna work both of these. I know the target's a million dollars, but I'm 10X. So I'm gonna go for a $10 million valuation. Boom, send it. I gotta get this million dollar promotions business on its feet as fast as possible. And to do that, I have to find the right person at the right time that wants to grow their business and grow a cash flow machine. First thing tomorrow, I need to start working on the promotion business. And I need to start reeling in those clients. and Matt and I still don't have a single client for our promotional company. During my research, I found a fantastic place called Active Armor. How you doing? I'm Lewis. I'm Diana. Hi, nice to Pleasure meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Hi. So I called Diana Hall and I set up a meeting. I want Active Armor to be our first client. Look, sales is a contact sport. It's all about getting in front of the right number of people and scaling how many people you can present your product offer or service to. Big companies make lots of contacts, make more contacts, and maybe they'll become contracts. You are a legend in this town. <laughs> you are. Okay, let me just tell you, man, this is just like making me sick to my stomach watching this. I was there four hours, four hours with Diana, okay? Now, Diana was a local person in the community. There's, there's so much they're not showing you here. While I knew that Diana was not going to do business with me, she is not scalable. Uh, Discovery set up that meeting. I don't know if you guys can tell that. Hey, we got a local person here. They, she was on Matt's list. I got her from Matt's list. They made a phone call. Diana says, yeah, I'll be on TV, blah, blah, blah. They do a lot of that stuff behind the scenes. But I was like, every meeting they did this with, turned into nothing every time. Just because somebody wants to be on TV doesn't mean they want to scale their business. I made a comment right there at the end. I said, money is the only reason I'm here. She's running a business. She's not interested in making money. She's not interested in scaling her business. She said that to me. Had I known that, and I would have found that out in the opening call, because I would have asked more questions. If you go back and watch the phone call that I made to Diana, you can tell that it's actually not the phone call. The real phone call went like this. Hey, Diana, Grant Cardone, uh, no, I'm sorry, Lewis Curtis, Matt Smith introduced me to, to you, said you're a legend in the town. You got this great business. I got a marketing company I'm started. I wanna come out and talk to you about what I'm doing for local businesses. She said on that call, we're not doing any marketing. I'm like, I get it, but you'll know a lot of other people that can actually utilize my expertise. I'd like to just meet you. She's like, cool, when can you come out? I can come out today at noon. I can be there at noon. She's like, great. And then I said, would there be any reason, Diana, that you couldn't be there at noon? And she's like, no, no, I'll be here for sure. I'm marketing my schedule right now. That's how that call really went down. They didn't catch it. They didn't get it. They had some kind of glitch on their cameras. So I had to redo. Go back and watch the call. Watch how different that is than what I just told you. I go out there, meet her, 
And, I, you know, I'm realizing as soon as I get there, the doll, the factory, a couple of workers, I'm like, this ain't a real business. They're not going to scale this deal. They're not going to blow up. What the hell am I doing here? Later in another show, if they show it, again, I'm watching this with you for the first time. I'm seeing how much they didn't include, okay? Behind the scenes, undercover billionaire. There's meetings where Matt and I would walk into a meeting and literally within 30 seconds, guys, I'm out of here, I'm bouncing. And they're like, what, what just happened? The cameras all went there to shoot this one scene. And then as soon as I realized there was no money in the room, I'm like, I'm out of here, bounce. And everybody would get upset. Discover you should be ashamed of yourself. You had a chance to show America how it really works and you blew it. And so <clears throat> I'm just telling you behind the scenes, okay? Notice the positive affirmations that are all over my little apartment, okay? I'm gonna build a $10 million business. It was all over, it was on the bathroom wall, it was on the mirrors, it was in the kitchen. I'm cooking my own food every day. Why am I cooking my own food? Why didn't they tell you why I'm cooking my own food? Because I'm getting it from a farm. I'm getting fresh food from a farm. I had a meeting at a farm. I actually got this guy to agree to give me some of this free leftover slop, going bad vegetables, and I'd bring them home and I'd actually cook those vegetables for my food. Cold calls. You know how many cold calls I made while I was in Pueblo? Hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds. Where did I get the names from? I got the names from Matt. They didn't show you that. Contacts are contracts. I don't want to make a cold, cold, cold call. I want to make one that where I can say, Matt Smith gave me your name. That's how I built my list. The mask. I'm using my mask to cover my face because I don't want to shave my hair, okay? My kids beg me, please do not shave your head again. And then I told Discovery, I cannot shave my head again, but it was becoming a problem. You'll see what happens in a future episode because the mask and the hair and the glasses, notice I'm wearing those more often because I'm having more and more trouble staying Lewis Curtis and not being discovered as Grant Cardone has come to Pueblo. I'm an all-in guy. I've never made little investments. I've always taken big chunks of whatever I had and thrown it all into something. My first really serious investment was $350,000 in an apartment complex in Vista, California. Bought that first real estate deal and I was out of money. I had zero money. I was terrified. But that deal made five million bucks. Oh my God. That was a big lesson in my life. Like, be afraid, but do it anyway. My game is way off today. I don't want to be here. My wife and daughter are at a church retreat, so I'm missing that. My other daughter's hanging out on a yacht. I'm missing that. My plan the whole time has been to bring my family out here. As badly as I want them with me right now, I cannot have them come because it'll just be a distraction. Every ounce of energy has to go into building the empire with Matt. And that's not going well right now. So this morning I'm waking up saying, what, what the f am I doing here, dude? What am I, what am I doing here? You know, what am I even doing here? Like I can't seem to get ahead. The only consolation for missing my family and being gone and missing these moments, it'll validate to me. The number one question people ask me, dude, if you didn't have any money and you weren't Grant Cardone and you didn't have this big following and you had to start all over again, what would you do? Thank you. And I'm doing it. If I pull this deal off, this will be good for my business. If I don't pull it off, Mr. 10X ain't 10X. What am I even doing here? I don't have a single client or prospect for the promotional company. I haven't heard anything about the apartment deal. I might not hit my targets. I might not hit my goals, but I'm not gonna fail if I don't quit. Look, I'm thinking about quitting here. I'm having, again, behind the scenes, so many problems with the network, so many problems with the people on the ground with me. Remember, COVID's hit everybody and everybody's scared. Okay, people are separated from their families. They can't get home. People are getting sick. The hospitals are loaded up. Like, there's a lot of bad news in the world. The angst with the people on the ground with me and the angst back at Discovery headquarters and then me being this free willy, free, you know, rebellious kind of, you know, 
guy were clashing all the time. So I'm waking up on day 33 saying, dude, I'm done. I'm out of here. I don't want to keep doing this. I'm tired of eating in Pueblo. I have no money. I have no contacts. I got a couple of things working, but nothing's coming together. My wife and kids are off doing other stuff. I'm not with them. I'm 64 years old. I don't need to do this. This is ridiculous. I'm also concerned because I'm like, if this don't work out, this is gonna be egg on my face. This scene opened with a squirrel opening up this, I don't know what fruit that was, but that's how I kind of feel like I'm a squirrel trying to get a nut and I'm running out of time. One third, I thought I would be out of Pueblo in 30 days with a million dollar bag. Here 33 days, I have zero prospects. I'm truly getting scared and you can see the way I'm operating. What I don't know that's going on is Discovery at corporate headquarters in Los Angeles has decided to shoot this show a different way where there's going to be three entrepreneurs and they're going to cut back and forth to all three of us. But they're not telling me that. The producer knows it. Discovery knows it. I'm talking to these people every day and they're not telling me this. And that's why I'm feeling this angst and these problems because they're behind the scenes. They got this other agenda that they're running the scam on me. Shame on you. They're running this scam, okay? They're not telling me. I'm detecting it and picking it up, okay? And I'm unhappy and I wanna quit, okay? Because the fight on the ground is terrible. People have asked me, hey, what was your experience like going to Pueblo? This was the single worst experience of my lifetime. And it was a cool deal too, by the way. Would I do it again? Probably not. Would I recommend you do it? Never.